And there we go. All right. Uh, thank you, folks, for joining us for our uh, next honors program colloquium. This is, I believe, the third colloquium we're doing out of seven this semester. So we have a bunch kind of <laughs> bunched up at the end. I uh, just want to mention that our next event is going to be November the 9th in this same room at this same time. And our very own Dr. Kevin Ells in the back there and uh, honors student Brooklyn Bailey are going to be presenting on how broadcast media spins social media to further push agendas and the generational biases that follow so we can have a nice deconstruction of where news is created. But today we are having a, a very different a uh, very interesting sort of talk by uh, my colleague in mechanical engineer. Yes, uh, this is Dr. M.D. Nizam Udin, who is going to be speaking to us on atmospheric water through nanotechnology needs and future prospects. So at the end, we should have a little bit of time for questions. Uh, but until then, I'll turn it over to Dr. Udin. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Yeah. Is the voice clear? Is it okay? Yes. yes. Okay, I am uh, Mohammed Nizamuddin. You guys know this. Um, Assistant Professor of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, thank you for inviting me for this session. Thank you. Please uh, feel free to stop me anytime if you have any question. Okay. Today I will talk about atmospheric water collection uh, via nanotechnology, process, needs, and uh, Fisher prospect. Sorry, we're going to put it on the uh, slideshow. Sorry, I, I turned off the slideshow. <laughs> I do. Oh, yeah. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, these are the my uh, outline, but we're not seeing heading, right? Uh, no, I get rid of that. Okay. Okay? Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. The beauties of doing things over Zoom as well. That. And yes, that. Okay. Uh, these are the outline of my talk. Uh, I briefly introduce uh, fog harvesting technology, uh, the currently used different material system that we use for fog harvesting. And the material, the characteristics of the material we will call hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity. I also briefly introduce those things. And in this field, I did some work uh, in my PhD study. And after that, I did some work. We develop some material system. We fabricate some material system, especially the polymeric composite material. It's a hybrid material using some polymer combining with some nano and microparticle. We fabricated some material. So it's electric spinning process. And then we measure its fog harvesting performance. Are you guys familiar with uh, electric spinning? Material characteristics. Anybody here from material background? No. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, I did some work uh, like pan PLU nano composite. Pan and PLU is the two polymer. Uh, with this two polymer, I added some micro and nano particle and fabricate nano composite. So secondly, I use some recycled plastic or polymer. Right? We use the styrofoam right? for one time pass. This white color is styrofoam. I use that recycled plastic to fabricate some nano composite mm -hmm. and apply it for that composite for fog harvesting application. Thirdly, we develop some uh, hydrogen system. You guys are familiar with hydrogen? Mm -hmm. Some hydrogen. And that hydrogen I use for for harvesting purpose. And lastly, my conclusion and references. We have plenty of water, right? <laughs> but how much it's ready to drink? How much is available for me? Can you imagine? Seventy percent of this world, right? Is water. Seventy percent of water, right? But only this much, 0.007 percent, we can drink. Let's stop them directly. We can't drink it. These are the my motivation 
uh, I did some uh, some study in this area, especially my country. I am from Bangladesh, my city. We have plenty of groundwater. We have hills, rivers. We have ponds. We have seas. We have plenty of water. But we can do it because of arsenic issue. We can drink it. This is my motivation why I did some work in this field. Now, let's look at some challenges and opportunities in this area. About 1 billion people are suffering for gaining drinking water, safe, clean drinking water, 1 billion people. By 2025, approximately 2.4 billion people will live in areas with absolute water scarcity. This is the United Nations Convention to Convert Rural Education. This organization reported this thing. By 2025, 2.4 billion people. And arsenic is another threat. As I say, in my country, my city, we have water, but we can't take it because of this guy, arsenic. 140 million people is suffering due to arsenic. How we can solve this issue? Imagine we have water, right? We can't drink it. All, all of the groundwater is polluted. Then how we can get our drinking water, our safe drinking water from the atmosphere? Atmosphere, harvesting water from the atmosphere, this could be part of the solution. You can solve this issue 100%, but it could be part of the solution, harvesting water from the atmosphere. But atmosphere has 37.5 billion, billion gallons of water in the vapor phase. Even this one is renewable sources. If you harvest all the water, it will not be run. It's the renewable sources. If we can develop some technology, we can develop some material that can harvest atmospheric moisture, atmospheric fog, then we can use that water for our drinking purpose, agriculture, and other uses. We can use it. Let's look at some uh, high water space countries around the globe. Uh, this is still straight the road here, and this is high. Uh, if you look at this area, number one is Qatar, number two is Israel, number three is Lebanon, Jordan, Iran, especially this area, they have a huge shortage of water, huge, huge shortage, even some of the African countries also, uh, this area, you see, if you look at the, uh, this scale, also this part, my country is here, we have also shortage of drinking water. We have water, but that's we can drink it. Any question guys up to now? Okay, now looks looks at uh, some natural for harvester. In nature there are some animals, some plants, they harvest the drinking water from the atmosphere. Did you guys know this thing? Do you guys know any animal that harvest water from the atmosphere? There are some plant, some animal. For example, this one is a Nami desert beetle. This beetle lives in one of the driest places in, in this envelope, that is southwest coast of Africa. This beetle is correct, it's drinking water directly from the atmosphere. This area, that the, uh, the desert, Nami desert, is very dry, but it has used for the foggy area. How is courage? It's the drinking water. This bigger. If you look at this extractor, this, this figure shows the ACM images of this extractor. It's a combination of some bumpy surface and flat surface, right? The bumpy surface and flat surface. The bumpy surface we call the hydrophilic surface. Water attracting surface and the flat surface we call hydrophobic surface, water repairing surface. When wind blows with fog or moisture, this guy is just leave this structure up, this bomb, attack the moisture or fog from the atmosphere and form this water droplet and directly drain to its mouth. This way, this guy collects its atmospheric water. There are some other plants and trees like this. 
Imaginal spider stick, right? Cactus, Nemanthesis, Elaida, those are the plants and animals directly which can collect its water from the atmosphere. It can harvest water. It has this capability. Bear drone is a structure. Now, let's look at the hydrophobicity, waiting characteristics of a surface. Because any surface or any material, if you want to collect atmospheric force for the moisture or anything as atmospheric water, your surface should be hydrophobic or hydrophilic. What is those hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity? The waiting characteristics of a surface. Basically, the hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity of any free surface is depend on the surface energy. You guys know the surface energy, right? Surface free energy. If the energy is high, surface energy is high, then its waiting characteristics is low. The hydrophobicity is low. Did you guys understand what I'm saying now? The surface free energy, this surface side, it has some free energy. It is not its uh, chemical structure, right? It has some free energy. If energy is high, its waiting characteristics is low. Hydrophobicity is low. And we define this by measuring the water contact angle. The theta here is called water contact angle. If the water contact angle is less than 30 degrees, 5 degrees, sorry, 5 degrees, then you call super hydrophilic surface. On the other side, if the water contact angle theta is between 150 to 180 degree, we call super hydrophobic surface. Super hydrophilic and super hydrophobic. Super hydrophilic means water attracting surface, and super hydrophobic means water retaining surface. This surface is like water. This is the two examples of super hydrophilic surface. You see, water droplet, this surface doesn't absorb any water, or it absorbs only less water. If surface energy is very, uh, very low, weighting is very high. Did you guys understand? The hydrophobicity, at least hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity of the surface. Water drop it, it's bounced back, right? If this is hydrophobic surface, if you drop any water, water drop it, it will bounce back. The surface is, will not absorb that moisture of water. It's like this. There are some uh, natural super hydrophobic surface, I guess. I think most all of you guys are familiar with this water spider, right? Gecko, butterfly, rose leaf. This one is rotor leaf, paddy leaves, right? This surface is not absorbing water. You, you see, this is a droplet form like this on the rose leaf. You guys saw this thing on the rotor leaves, absorbing water, right? On the rotor leaf. By starting this, we try to develop some material system by okay, starting this starter. This figure is showing that you see the starter, the same image. By starting this structure and the Nami Blizzard Peter, we plan to develop some material system using polymer and nano and microparticle. We try to limit, we try to fabricate this kind of surface. And we use this for fog harvesting application. If you want to fabricate a material for fog harvesting application, you should have both characteristics, like this one. You should have both characteristics, like this one. You should have some bumpy surface that will attack water and some hard surface that will drain the water. You should have combination of hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity in your surface, then you can collect atmospheric water or fog or moisture, anything efficiently. You can combine those characteristics with one surface. Uh, these are the process, uh, pan PMMA composite. I am not going in details. I use the test painting method. These are the pan PMMA. Then I added some aluminum particle and TiO2 nanoparticle. You guys have a TiO2, right? A lot of application of TiO to titanium nanoparticle and aluminium microparticle. Then after electric spinning, I got this kind of hybrid composite. 
Then after heat treatment, these are the my material. Then I use this material. Oh, sorry, these are the morphology, the KCF images of uh, the fan TM composite. Then I use this for fog harvesting performance. I measure its fog harvesting performance. One is square meter of that surface, one is square meter. If you keep it outside on your roof, humidity is around 68 to 70 percent. It can collect 1.49 meter of water overnight. Humidity is 70 percent, around 70 percent, 68 to 70 percent. And material cost for this surface, subjugating this surface, if you want to get six liters of water per day, you need only 4.96 liters. These are the material cost one. Any question, guys? <clears throat> for, uh, for the application, do you envision being um, essentially on a household by household basis, or is, is there an industrial? No, this is, uh, this is just uh, this is not this soil. If you want to collect six liters of water for two member household, sure. making that kind of uh, composite, your material cost is only 4.96. Right, you can do it on a much bigger scale. Yeah, you can do bigger scale. Yeah. This is a laboratory scale I did it with test its performance. You can do bigger scale, yeah. Um, you were talking about using styrofoam to create, I think, like the filtration disks. Yeah, I, I am going there. Thank you. Oh, um, my next thing is uh, oh, these are the uh, fog condensation process. How water droplet, fog or moisture droplet condense on the surface. It's very dark surface. I think this image is not clear, but this is how uh, I showed how moisture particles accumulate and form the larger particle and drain. Uh, my next thing is to use some. It's kind of foam to fabricate similar kind of nanocomposite material for fog harvesting application. In 2019, 359 million metric tons of plastics are produced globally. Only 9% of them recycled. The rest of them is where? Environment, right? Plastic, it takes more than 100 years to degrade, even more, not only 100 years. Some of them is 200 years, right? If you want to reduce greenhouse gases, reduce the pollution of water, air, those things. If you want to clean our environment, if you want to seek our clean environment, what we need? We need to reduce the production of plastic and we need to recycle more, right? With those things in mind, I use some styrofoam. I will be standard with this kind of styrofoam, right? This kind of styrofoam using electric spinning for process by adding some micro and nano particle, then I got this kind of fiber, the nano component. This one is showing the SCM images. Same thing I use for fog harvesting application. This one is the fiber morphology. And that composite, the raw material is styrofoam, recycled plastic. It can harvest 1.35 meter of water per square meter of the nano component. If you place them outside, also same 68 to 70 percent humidity, the foggy area, it can harvest this much water. And the material cost for, for this is only 2.69 US dollar to get six liter of water per day. Overnight, if you want to collect six liter of water, if you want to make this traffic at this kind of surface, this kind of nano composite, you have to spend only 2.67 dollars. This is a styrofoam case. The styrofoam is your raw material. Add some nano and uh, micro and nanoparticle. You have to spin this, do some heat treatment process, and use this for fog harvesting application. These are the process. Any question, guys? Up to now, these two material system, pan PMMA or recycled expand, uh, ex expanded polystyrene. This material harvest a lot of water but it's humidity related if the humidity is very high 65 70 80 that area if you fail this kind of composite then you can collect a lot of water right but when the humidity is low 30 percent then its performance is also low in some of the areas 
they have humidity is low, right? In some of the areas, not 40 percent, 35 percent, 40 percent, 45 percent. They have shortage of water. How they can collect the atmospheric water? For that things, we develop some hydrogen system. For this figure is showing the uh, water condensation process for uh, recycled expanded for this guy. This one. Sorry, one thing I missed. This composite not only collecting water, it's a mesh, it's right, composite mesh, nanofiber mesh. Its velocity is nanometer wave. It's collecting water at the same time, it's filtering the water. The water you are getting out of any bacteria, virus, this kind of things. If you can fabricate this kind of nanofiber, with 200 diameter nanometer, you can safely drink that water because it's collecting water at the same time it's filtering water because this velocity is very low. So far, uh, I have it's in nanometer level, 400 nanometer, 500, 800 in this level the velocity. The water you are getting is free from all or dirt, all bacteria, virus, all, all of those things. You don't need to think about, is it polluted water? Can I drink it? Is it safe or not? You don't need to think about this. Because the material system itself is filtering the water because of its structure, because of its velocity. Large size particle can go through with that, with that composite system, material system. Now, I was talking about the hydrogen, the humidity, when the humidity is 30%, 40%, there is no fog, right? That area, you cannot use that material, this two material you cannot use. It. Then we try to develop some hydrogen system, it's a very long process, I am not going in details. I use some polymer, pan, am, some nanofiber, then adding a lot of things, we try to develop we try to fabricate some hydrogen system. This material, this hydrogen, pan AM CSL to hydrogen, it can harvest atmospheric moisture, even the dry air. Humidity is 25%. If you press them, this hydrogen, even it can capture that moisture from the atmosphere. It has this ability. Uh, we are submitting a patent out of this work. We, have also, we already submit this pattern from this work. This material, I am not showing in details for this process because we are submitting pattern from that work. Uh, the idea is like this, right? You have some hydrogen here, right? Place it outside, it will absorb moisture from the air. At low humidity, it will absorb moisture. And during daytime, like this, this is my hydrogen. Place it outside in a plastic box or anything. Place it outside, it will absorb moisture. It's like a sponge factor. When it absorbs moisture, it will be swollen, right? Now, when sunlight comes, it will heat that. You have to cover it. Daytime, you have to cover it. Then, when you cover it, we use some magnifying glass to uh, produce enough heat here to evaporate the ab absorbed water. This hydrogen will absorb atmospheric moisture. Then you have to get that water out of hydrogen, right? Now sunlight. We don't. You don't need to apply extra energy. Sunlight will heat this hydrogen and, and produce water vapor here. After condensation, you are getting fresh water from here. The idea is this thing. At the night time, you are absorbing atmospheric moisture. Daytime, sunlight will heat this and it will evaporate that water. And you have to collect that water. The amazing thing is, this is also very cheap technology. You can easily fabricate this. You don't need to do a lot of things. You don't need to do, you don't need to use a costly instrument or nothing. It's very cheap technology. You can fabricate it easily. You can use it easily. <clears throat> and these are some ACM images of that hydrogen. And suppose these are the hydrogen. This is the plastic work. 
keep it outside. We should absorb the moisture at the low humidity area and then cover it during daytime. You see, after uh, evaporation and condensation, you can collect water from your box. And the performance of this material is one kg hydrogen. If you press one kg hydrogen, uh, you can collect at least 980 millimeters of fresh water. And it's a little bit expensive. Calculating this, uh, its cost is $4.27 USD if you want to get six liters of water. And actually, uh, <laughs> I'm not working uh, use this hydrogen project. We have a lot of information, many things I'm not showing. Uh, we already submitted it, uh, submitted a patent here. And my conclusion is safe water, safe life. It's not only just about water, it's our hair, economy, education and happiness. This is my conclusion. A reference and yours. Uh, I, I definitely have some questions, but in deference to my uh, audience, both here and on Zoom, I'm happy to open it up to uh, you folks first. Yeah. So you said that the, um, the other stuff, it filled with the bacteria, did the hydrogen do the same thing? No, 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 hydrogen, no, no. That's, that's two first two material again. That is, uh, that's future. Hydrogen is not future. So in that case, what would you use that water from the hydrogen, like the hydrogel for, like just everyday use or like because you can, you can use for any application. You can use for drinking. You can use for agriculture. Your household application, any application you can use. It. You know this this atmospheric water, right? Atmospheric moisture we are collecting. We are harvesting atmospheric moisture. I have a couple of questions on Zoom, and then we'll put it back to folks in the classroom. Uh, Kevin asks, uh, would harvesting create any problematic changes in our atmosphere? No, no, no. 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 Small enough. Because it's a renewable source, right? It's a renewable source. Sun is heating this uh, water, getting atmosphere, water is getting atmosphere, then we are harvesting. Okay. It's a cyclic process. Dr. Kalam asks, um, do you need both the hydrophobic and hydrophilic? Uh, characters to be present uh, when I'm yes. hydrophobic. Yes, uh, we need both characteristics hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity because hydrophobicity makes your performance, right? Harvesting performance and hydrophilicity that will attack the water, right? If you place a surface, you should have something here, right? To attack the atmospheric moisture, atmospheric water droplet, right? You should have both characteristics. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Dr. Kalam. Yes, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for your nice presentation. But uh, don't you think the gravi gravitational force is enough to collect the water? Yes, gravitational force is enough. Mm -hmm. the so why hydrophobicity yeah. uh, is necessary? No, no, gravitational force is enough. So, so if hydrophobicity is required to collect the water uh, and uh, hydrophilicity is required to um, uh, capture the water. Yeah, drain the water, yes. Yeah, trap the water. So if I trap the water and the gravitational force will uh, uh, act or pull down the water, why not only hydrophilicity would be uh, enough, why not? Hydrophobicity, I tried this before combining two characteristics. I fabricated some surface only hydrophobic properties and hydrophilic properties. And then I combined them together. So far, my understanding and my observation, both characteristics. If you have only hydrophilic surface, that's not harvesting enough water. You should have some some characteristics that attack the moisture particle to your surface. If you don't have that thing, your evaporation loss will be high. There are some losses here. 
evaporation loss. So evaporation will be reduced if it is hydrophilic. Um, probably it is because of the low moisture, moisture content. I'm not sure. We can talk about that later. Okay. Also, Thank you. But the thing is, uh, as I uh, you saw, if you saw my uh, beginning of my presentation, the Namib does that better, right? The right. Better right. Have the both characteristics. Mm. We try to mimic that one. All right. We yeah, try right. separately hydrophobic surface, separately hydrophilic surface. Yeah. The both combination gave the best performance so far. Okay. Do we have any uh, other questions? I have a couple in uh, in the class or in the uh, in the room. Uh, Oh, I'll say this another minute. Oh, another question here. Sorry. Uh, so the hydrophobicity helps to funnel the water. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, Caitlin, you're probably our last question, and then uh, we can send him over to chat and whoever else wants to talk. Yes, Caitlin. Um, I was wondering, since you make your um, filtration discs out of like plastics, could you harvest microplastics from the environment to help clean up your environment in order to make these uh, machines? The styrofoam project has a styrofoam one, right? Yeah, we use a recycled plastic, right? This is one kind of recycling, right? Instead of throwing your water cuff, just use this material, fabric, fabricate this kind of nanocomposite, and use it for soil harvesting. These are the idea behind it. This one kind of recycling, right? I am not using costly material. I am using recycled plastic. Waste plastic, my raw material to fabricate this kind of nanocomposite. Okay. Uh, we're probably about out of time, but if you do have additional questions, I'm sure Dr. Ujain will be more than happy to uh, to answer them. Uh, I think his email was uh, was at the front of the presentation. Uh, Tamut.edu. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, give him one more uh, round of applause. And thanks. Thank you to my friends on Zoom. Uh, thank you. Uh, that was fun. See you, folks.